everyone. I'm Julie from the Feed Feed. Thanks so much for coming today. Um, we're so happy everyone's here. For anyone who doesn't know about Feed Feed, we're a food media company. We're the largest crowdsourced cooking publication on our website. Um, we're also crowd curated. We have hundreds of community editors that help us uh, curate the content that's shared on our hashtag. Most people know us from Instagram at the Feed Feed. And today I'm super excited because we have Suzanne Cups here from Untitled. And um, we're really excited to participate in Food Loves Tech because being um, a very social media forward food media company, we're all about the intersection of food and technology and teaching people how to cook. Um, we put this kitchen together just yesterday and we partnered up with some of our favorite brands, specifically Vitamix. Um, we are running a giveaway with Vitamix, so everybody has a little wrist bracelet. And if you just pop over to our booth afterwards, you could be entered for a chance to win a Vitamix. We're giving away tons of Vitamix over the next couple days. Um, if you don't have a Vitamix, I definitely recommend one. It's an amazing tool in the kitchen. Um, we just showed earlier how to infuse oil with herbs, actually heat that up. Um, you can make a soup, you can make breads, you can really make anything. So um, I'll turn it over to Suzanne, who's going to be making some honey roasted carrots um, and a cashew butter and some puffed puff grains. puff grains. Awesome. Hi, I'm Suzanne Cups. I'm the chef of Untitled. Uh, we're located in, in the meat, uh, meatpacking district, uh, right in the Whitney Museum of Art uh, on the ground floor. And we're excited to be here today. We've worked with Edible Manhattan uh, pretty often, and this is our first time at Food Loves Tech. Um, and, but we, in the kitchen, um, we use uh, the Vitamix every day, uh, multiple times, many, many times. So it's, it's great to be able to demo this today. Um, uh, like Julie said, we're doing honey roasted carrots. We've got these great carrots that we got from Alewife Farm at the Green Market in Union Square. Um, we're going to make a cashew butter, which um, I really like to show people how to make uh, nut butters because it's really easy to be able to do it at home, um, especially if you have a Vitamix or saw a powerful blender. Um, and then we're going to uh, do some crispy grains. Um, I brought some uh, cracked spelt, uh, which we get through green market grains at the market also. Um, so yeah, I, I'll start off, I'm going to start off making the, the cashew butter first. Um, it's a little tricky and the only, the only reason it's tricky is because um, the nut butters get really thick in the Vitamix, so you have to really take your time. Hopefully I won't mess it up. We'll see how it goes. Give me to do it over sure. here. I can bring it over here. So this is great. This is actually um, a newer model than I have at the restaurant, so bear with me if I mess it up. Put this um, So um, the, the first thing when you're making any kind of nut butters, um, we do cashew butter, we have pistachio butter. If you want to do traditional peanut, you can do that too, but I love the cashews. I love the flavor, um, especially with fall vegetables. Um, and I also love that they're a little soft, so they're a bit easier to puree, uh, which is always nice. Um, the one thing you want to do with your nuts before you puree is um, you want to roast them. So we just roasted this in a 350 degree oven. Um, it takes five or six minutes uh, with a little salt and olive oil so that that flavor really comes through. If you don't roast the nuts, you, you won't get that end uh, result of the really um, cashew flavor. So, um, and did you soak them as well? No, no soaking. Just uh, just olive oil and um, just olive oil and um, salt. I'm gonna try with a, a little less. Uh, and the great thing about cashew butter too is it stays for days, so you can make it a week in advance and keep it in your refrigerator. Um, it's great for breakfast. It's great for desserts. A little bit of everything. Um, so I just have plain water that I'm gonna combine with the cashews to start. Um, you can do flavored if you're, it depends on what your, your end result is. Um, you could use vegetable stock if you're making a savory preparation. Uh, sometimes we'll use dashi uh, with our, our uh, nuts to create a different kind of dish. Um, but this is just plain water. You mean uh, to turn it on? Yeah, well I might have to, sorry, I don't yep. think it's gonna catch, so I'm gonna, yeah, add, I'm gonna add a little bit more. That's why I might need more water. Mm. <laughs> All right. Actually, Vitamix is right over there, and they're making peanut butter. There you go. Um, so you can watch them make some peanut butter directly. So you want to start really slow. Um, so that's one on the lowest speed, because it's going to start and catch. So I want the blender to keep going as much as possible. You can use the plunger to kind of help, help its way through if it gets stuck. 
And then I like to use a really kind of uh, mild olive oil. It says Riviera, but you can use whatever oil you have at home. And you want to stream in some oil. And that just helps the kind of the water um, and the nuts come together a little bit more and emulsify. You don't have to use a ton, but just enough to get kind of a creamy texture. And um, I want to just uh, increase the speed just a touch to try to make it as smooth as possible. You just don't want to go up too high too fast or it's going to um, get stuck in the blender. I'm going to add just a little more olive oil. So you can see how it's, get, it's making that kind of butter right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a really easy way. Um, when you go to the grocery store, a lot of times they put a ton of preservatives in it, and this is just um, just nuts and water and olive oil, so it it, um, it will save for a while. It's and also, also just so you can easy. make it with yeah. any kind of nuts: yeah. um, toasted almonds, peanuts, cashews. So it's about there. That's great. All right. So now I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna put it in a mixing bowl. I want to make sure it's seasoned because we added all that water to it, so it's probably gonna need a little bit of salt, and that's really to taste. What your I preference. can do that for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've got a spatula if you need. Thanks. Okay. Um, so while she's doing that, I'm gonna um, like I talked about before. Uh, we like to work with uh, local grains, so we love the ancient grains, the emmer and the frica, and those ones that are pretty healthy for you. Um, the Green Market came out with a new type of grain, it's a cracked spelt, and I love this because it has just a softer texture than most of the emmer and frica that you generally eat. Um, we just cook it uh, in boiling water, it takes about uh, 12 to 15 minutes, so it's really fast, and then finish it with some olive oil and salt. Um, in the restaurant we use it, uh, it, it kind of cooks like bulgur would cook, um, so we use it in salads like a tabbouleh salad. Uh, right now we have it on our kale salad with honey nut squash, so it's re really versatile um, how you use it. Um, to make the, the crack spelt, um, you have to cook the spelt and overcook it just a little bit so the grains are really soft. And then um, we dehydrate it uh, in our oven, uh, but you could leave it out for a couple days just to get it really dry. And later on you guys can come up and take a look, but it's, um, this is the dried spelt. Uh, which you can keep in your pantry for days and days, and it kind of—it's it's fun to be able to have grains like this that you could add to cereal or dishes like vegetables. Um, but I have a fryer here, and I, I hope it's uh, about the right temperature. I've got it on about 360, um, and I'm going to try to just puff this spelt. It doesn't—it only takes a couple seconds. Um, I think it, it's a little low, but I think we're we're okay. You may um, turn it up a little. Yeah, why not, you? Let's see if it's, uh, it kind of just will um, puff up just like popcorn would. You need like a, a, a enough oil to make it pop. But I'm gonna add this in. And you wanna just stir it around. You wanna have something absorbent so, so when it comes Puff's out spelled. that it absorbs some of that oil. Puffed. You can do this with quinoa, you can do this with emmer. Um, all different kinds of grains. Um, you just have to really dry it out pretty well before you uh, before you puff it. But I love the texture of it. It's yeah, cool. That's a nice crunch. Yeah. And a lot of times you pay a lot of money for the a lot of the granola bars and everything now have the puff grains in it, which makes it kind of lighter and a uh, better texture. So. Did it go up a little? Yeah. I'm yeah. starting the rise to the top. And how long should it take? If your oil's at about 360 degrees, it really just takes a couple seconds. It depends how much. If I were doing all this at once, it takes a little bit longer. Yep. But if you're doing a smaller amount, um, just a few seconds. Yep.
The ones that rise to the top, I can just kind of spider out. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so we're puffing the cracked spell. Puffing the cracked spell, yeah. A lot of times we'll use um, other grains, um, like quinoa or something too, for gluten allergies. But yeah. Another thing that's great with the, these uh, ancient grains, um, like emmer and frica and even the spelt, is they're a lot lower in gluten. So people that um, have a slight intolerance to gluten a lot of times can eat these grains too. But on the, on the menu in Untitled, we have a whole section devoted to vegetables, whatever seasonal and local. Um, so this is a, a, a dish that we've had on in the past and it's one of my favorites. Um, uh, what I really love about carrots is um, when you roast them, so we, we actually don't even peel the carrots, we just uh, scrub them so they're nice and clean. And then we roast them in an oven with high heat, about 400 degrees till they're tender. And they come out really, really naturally sweet, which is, um, which is amazing. Um, so we're gonna, uh, next we're gonna just cook that, uh, those carrots, um, get them a little browned and finish them with some honey and um, butter. And then we're gonna kind of put up, put the whole dish together. I can strain that out if you yeah, want to do the carrots. Yeah. And then if you just want to add a little salt at the end too. Yep, sure. Okay. So just a little olive oil in the pan. Somebody asked if you could roast instead of frying. Um, right. it, the, the greens don't, uh, when you roast them, it kind of um, dehydrates them a little differently and so they become a little stale tasting. Um, so I wouldn't recommend uh, uh, roasting them in the oven. Um, but, it, but you can actually just use the cooked grains if you, don't, if you don't prefer the oil. You can just use the soft grains, which actually is delicious with the dish too. So, so I have all these great carrots. I just uh, roasted them um, completely and then I cut them in half. And we're just gonna lightly sear them in the pan. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Molly. I think that's it so far. So yeah, I love this uh, cashew butter and the grains with um, the carrots, but a lot of times we've made them too for breakfast. So you could do, um, we make buckwheat crepes and you can spread a little of the cashew butter and some homemade jam in it too. And that makes a really delicious um, kind of uh, uh, breakfast treat. Sounds great. Yeah. I'm just gonna um, try to get a little bit of color, a little char on the carrots, which I always think makes it taste really good. You were talking about sourcing local and seasonal vegetables and grains. Do you guys go to the green market? We do. Uh, we buy most of our produce from uh, Union Square Green Market. Um, or the farmers, some of the farmers deliver, so everything from this area, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, uh, mostly. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Just roast them a little bit. And then I like to use just a little bit of butter. You can do it without butter if you, if you prefer. Um, but I like, uh, we use a local honey, Tremblay honey. Let's see if I can get From the it Hudson out. Valley? Mm -hmm. This guy up. Just a little honey and then uh, we're gonna add a little bit of butter that helps kind of get it nice and uh, caramelized. Helps the honey not to burn also in the pan. Yeah, that's a, a nice trick because the yeah. honey can burn quite honey, fast. Honey burns pretty fast. fast. Yeah. And then I always like to finish um, my dishes with a lot of acidity. So we use a lot of pickles at the restaurant um, or some lemon juice or lime juice. So I'm just going to give it a little lemon juice here. Yeah. And you can see it's already kind of browning and yep. crystallizing, a little, crystallizing a little bit. Yeah, you could serve this as like a main course or an appetizer or whatever you And know. you have this on the menu right now? Um, we actually have, um, we're not doing carrots right now. We're doing um, 
uh, a pistachio butter with uh, caramelized cauliflower. Oh yeah. And some crispy greens, which works really well too. Awesome. Yeah. So a lot of times I like to spread out the, the butter on the bottom of the plate, just to kind of give it an even layer so you get a little bit with each bite. And then you can plate the carrots just right from the pan. I love, um, I love having this time of year when you have all the different multiple kinds of colors of carrots. It's so beautiful. Yeah, the plating looks gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, simple. You can do it at home. Sometimes we'll add a couple more touches in the restaurant, but it's um, just as easy and just as tasty like this. It's really nice, the layering of the textures, having the creamy base yeah. um, with the roasted carrot on top. And I'm just going to spoon a little bit of the, um, a little of the honey and, and butter right over top. And then we've got some oh, you've got sweet grains right here. And that just gives it so much texture because the roasted carrots are pretty soft. Um, so the, the spelt, um, crispy spelt acts like that um, uh, textural element. And then um, one other great thing that's uh, with the dish is I love to finish dishes with some kind of herb or uh, green or something light. And we've been partnered with Sprouts.io for the demo today, which is really cool. And they have a pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing product. Let's see if I can it. take this off. Uh, they've grown some basil for us to use, and um, I love it. It's, so it's not a hydroponic. Um, there's actually no soil in, but it grows right into the water. Um, it's really the technology is pretty amazing. Um, the uh, the dock here has a camera under the light, so it kind of helps monitor the plant um, and its growth. Uh, it, you have an app on your phone that you can um, you can water the plant as needed. Uh, you can add it, uh, use it a little light, and there's a camera inside, so um, the team at Sprouts IO can also uh, help monitor your plant and, and make sure it's doing well. So, do you guys uh, have one in the kitchen? We don't, but I just got to meet them this week, so I'm really excited to work with them more. Awesome! Yeah. I'm gonna take this off. Yeah. We're done with this. Thing. So um, you can actually just pull from the roots straight up. Let's see if I can pull one out of the side. And because there's no dirt, um, you don't have to wash it at all. It's ready to go. And the flavor is really amazing. At, at our table over, over there, Kevin. we're doing a roasted beet dish. Um, and they have some micro amaranth and also arugula, which is, which is delicious. So again, just a little fresh touch to finish the dish is always nice. Do you do some sort of a variant of this dish in a different season? So instead of carrots, maybe asparagus or something? Yeah, it, it's, so, it's so easy to do in different ways. Um, and, and it's all about that balance of flavors, the creaminess of the nut um, and the richness and the earthiness of the carrot. Um, I like to have some sweetness because for me, you know, that classic combination of peanut butter and jelly is so important um, for people. So I love that idea of like honey and honey and cashew. Uh, right now we're doing pistachio butter, but we're balancing it with sorghum. So it needs a little acidity, uh, a little sweetness to, to balance. Um, but yeah, any of any roasted vegetables, um, it actually works pretty well. So we pick our favorites. Carrots are one of our favorites. So, uh, but yeah, awesome. so it's pretty it's pretty beautiful. simple. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing today is taking all of the dishes that we make today and tomorrow and photographing them right over here and putting them up on our website. So later, if you're okay with it, we would love to publish the recipe. So anyone who's been live or watching on Instagram Live or watches on the website later can then get the recipe. So thanks so much for coming to this demo. Uh, we really appreciate it. And don't forget to register to try to win a Vitamix.